Today's episode of This Week in MMO is brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Gamebreaker TV. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 192 of Twemo. It's July 7, 2014. I think we're going to talk about some uh, Warhammer 40k. We're going to talk about the next Rift expansion, which Larry is prepared for. I think we had a little bit of Warlords of Draenor today. We're not in Azeroth anymore. Larry Everett joining us. Mr. Uh, Justin JKK Kennedy. And Mr. Troy, the noob fridge. Greetings, Internet. What's up, everybody? How's everybody? How's everybody's fourth? Did you guys get everybody, everybody have all ten fingers still? I didn't get yes. any more near explosions, so luckily, no. yes. <laughs> Just watched yeah. this fourth. Yeah. Who's and a lot of south? barbecue and baked beans. Are there any of you guys from down south? I feel like no one. Who's, who's yep. south? Yeah, I'm You're down people. south, right? You do like any quarter yeah. sticks of dynamite and moonshine? You know, nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's called fishing. Yeah. Right, <laughs> we did. We did burn a couch in a bonfire while we watched fireworks. Does that see? Really there you it? go. It's the sound. Burn. <laughs> we got nothing to do. Burn shit. Let's just burn some stuff. Burn it. Nice. Nice. All right. Let's talk about some MMOs. What's going on? So it's been a while since we've been talking. Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade. They kind of did a big media push this week. We haven't. We this game's been around for quite a while, right? How long they've been developing now? For I don't know. Is it is it two years? Has it been about two years since we first heard of this? The Warhammer game. Yeah, it's been a Something while. Something like that. It's, it's been about. It's been quite a while. We just haven't heard a whole lot of news on it. It's been like the, the first I ever really heard anything on it was right around E three time. That's I guess that's probably when I started paying attention the most. Probably uh, was it? It's been. It was a while back. It just came out with all it came out with was like a website, wasn't it? I think we just had like a website, just one splash screen on the front or whatever. I think for a while. Yeah, there hasn't been a whole lot of big media. This is like the first time they've actually made like a big media push. So, I guess that they're describing it as forty Warhammer forty k meets Planet Side, which Does sounds help? intriguing. Um, sounds if, interesting. If, if they do it well, uh, they, I mean that's a. That's kind of a big goal, I think, to shoot for. I mean, Planet Side, you know, they, they do what they do rather well. So saying you're going to nail the Warhammer 40K feel and, and, you know, get that universe down. And when you jump in, those players are going to feel like they're in there and have the kind of playability of Planet Side too. I mean, those are some big lofty goals. Hopefully, hopefully they can hit them. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. Big lofty goals. Well, let's not forget this is the same company that uh, brought to you the classics such as uh, Doritos Crash Course 2. That was that was a good one. SpongeBob SquarePants, <laughs> Plankton's Robotic Revenge, and who can ever forget Carmen Sandiego, The Secrets of the Stolen Drums. Still haven't found those drums. You still yeah. haven't found your drums? Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, we first off, we don't know where in the world Carmen Sandiego is. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, yeah, so this is like a developer who's not necessarily known for making MMOs, but Behavior is a pretty big company, and uh, they do have a lot of MMO veterans on board working on this game. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think of the? Can you, you guys been following anybody like the lead designer or anything like that? He's been, he worked on The Secret World, um, a few other things. So they've got some vets there. Well, okay, so it depends on his focus as far as um, the game is concerned. I mean, as far, when you look at the secret world, I mean, first off, you don't look at combat style. So, uh, really, <laughs> I, you don't look at combat animations or anything along that line. But if you're looking at, like, quest development and, uh, you know, uh, capture like storytelling and capturing a, a an audience attention in in that fashion and immersion in that way then sure i th it, it definitely has potential um but yeah I, the, the the problem i i'm 
than I foresee in, in this whole thing. It's, it's kind of the it's kind of the same problem that you run into anytime you have an established IP, is you have people have a certain expectation of what they want that game to be, what they want that game to look like, and there is going to be a really huge push to try to emulate in some way, or at least the audience is expecting some sort of emulation between what you, you know, the the board game, I guess, or the tabletop game, and um, and what you get on, on this screen. This sounds like it's going to be stuff. nothing like... Yeah. It's, it's See, like it's Planicide like, to, is what they're related exactly, to. That, I mean, there's no Sin Secret World there. There's nothing like this intriguing storyline that we're going to go through and experience. It's we're going to fight people, which I'm fine with, but not expectancy of maybe the fans. Yeah, exactly, because like Larry was saying, I mean, the, the guy's got the, the Secret World backing with all the quest development and story and all that, but every video you see is just sort of pvp penis kind of happening, and, PvP-ness? you know, that pedigree doesn't really translate to that. <laughs> Large-scale pvp penis. Large-scale penis. <laughs> Lots of pvp penis. Yeah, so I'm 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 a little bit I'm a little bit concerned about that side of it. That, that's that's all. I I would. I don't know, but would you want like a for you so you right have like a 40k like tabletop experience in a video game? Like you want you want that kind of like you know tabletop well, sort I, of experiences? I, 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 pers- I don't know. Personally, yeah, personally, I mean, I'm not I'm not a huge you know uh, Warhammer fan in general. So, um, but I do know the internet that, just died a little when you said that. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> My reputation. Just, I just lost like a thousand followers on Twitter right now. But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. However, uh, I, I just, I just know that when you get a, a specific IP, that you, that people are, you know, going to be looking for something very specific. So, I mean, is the idea of a tabletop though? I mean, I don't tabletop game much, so you all have to answer this. But the idea is a story evolving from what kind of like decisions you make and then roll for and the chance and, and that and something happening there, isn't it? It's not a straight storyline that's going to happen and occur like you would expect from a theme park MMO. Well, something like Warhammer 40K, it's it's more of a strategic tactical yeah. kind of encounter than, than story. It's not so much like a dungeon delve role playing type thing. So yeah. so this really, uh, as far as video game wise, as the the way it plays, it's not going to play anything like the tabletop game. But I think the number one thing they need to do though is because I mean you're you're going with this IP. So if you're going to use this IP, this is very well known, very well established IP. You have to nail that feel and that universe. You, when the player logs in and starts playing the game, if they don't feel like they're in the Warhammer 40k universe, they're just going to go away. And it, it's, you know, regardless of what your gameplay mechanics are. And the second thing you've got to do is nail the gameplay mechanics and the combat because that's going to run everybody else off if that's bad. Well, there's yeah, five factions. Just so everybody knows what they're looking at here, this is in-game alpha footage, so that's why these things aren't even textured or anything like that. So this has got a long <laughs> very, way to go. Very, very early yeah. alpha. <laughs> Although it'd be kind of cool. I'd actually play this game if it said, like, gravity and paybox and I don't know what it even says on there. It just says, like, weird pink textures. I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to think of this game. I don't know. I love Warhammer 40K. This is an easy one to uh, screw up. We haven't seen a really good Warhammer game really kick ass in a long time. Ever. Yeah. So I mean, Space Marine. Yeah. That's about the only one I could think of is Space Marine. It was the only one that yeah. ever yeah. was People amazing. loved it. And I think, that's what, I think that actually, if anything, the people are going to want that feeling when they're playing this game if they're going to be an action-based um, game. They're going to yeah. want that Space Marine feeling. How MMO is this? Do we know? Do we know any information on how MMOE it's going to be? MMOE. I don't know. You read the site and you read things that sound MMOE, but then you watch every piece of footage they put out so far, and it looks giant battleground. Well, so, it's like it giant battleground, right? Well, it yeah, does. That's it what it says, looks like. And it says on their site, plan your strategy from orbit, then face down side by side with them as you defend strongholds. So it sounds like you're going to be like a, almost like a tactical map overview, and then choose locations to go down and defend or fight and take over and stuff. Which mm. that that sound right there sounds very much like the tabletop Warhammer game. You know, it's very kind of strategic overview of armies and, and, and positioning and that sort of thing. And But then you also mix in, like, what you're kind of showing here on the screen now is the, you know, the in-game. Once you 
dive down in there. Kind of, you know what? Um, I'm trying to remember that there is a, a single player game that, that that kind of reminds me of, where you see all the the stuff from you you design the tactical battles, and then once the battle kind of starts, you got, you jump in and you're part of this individual thing. I forget what the game is off the top of my head. I know they made a uh, they actually made a, a Lord of the Rings game like that was similar to that. But that's uh that's kind of what I uh, I see here. I don't know, I wonder if some of these people might be um did any of you play Global Agenda? That's what it reminds me of as well. Yes. Yeah. Because you had like that. you had the hexagon map and everything and you chose where you're going to go going for specific resources, blocking off paths and everything like that. So and you went down to arenas and fought the other team. What do you guys think about like companies this early on, like showing? I mean, they they threw up this YouTube, this YouTube page has a ton of videos already on it. There's a bunch of stuff to look at. A lot of them are short, but still, there's like this really early, early alpha, like I said, like non texture videos and things like that. What do you think about just like, I don't know. What do you think about the transparency of the company just coming forward and pu- putting out these videos this early on? I mean, because you think it's a really good thing that the players kind of see this in this fashion, or do you think it's kind of like it leaves more confusion and? Questions that need to be answered. Man, I, I'm I don't know, man. I'm I'm not I'm not a I'm not usually a fan of that. Uh, I I do just because I think that there is there is a, there's always going to be some people that that are going to take that as oh this is what the game looks like. There there's always going to be the the subset of people that don't read into what's happening and don't understand exactly what's happening and all they see are the uh, unfinished textures, the uh, wonky animations and those kinds of things and take that at at face value and say, hey, this is the game uh, and it sucks, so I'm not going to buy it. Well, I think they have a slight advantage right now. If they do it early enough and they don't try to texturize some of the stuff and then leave some of the stuff blank, then it then that would look really odd. But it seems like they have basically no textures on anything. Like everything is just very much the skeleton of it is what it looks like. So I, I think you can kind of get away with those a bit as just showing off like, hey, here's some concept ideas. It's almost like concept art. Just this is a concept video now. And, and see, I'm not a fan of showing stuff this early uh, for all the reasons Larry talked about. But also, we've seen other games do this. They show things way earlier than they should. You know, years before they're actually going to launch. And everybody gets hyped for it. It's all excited. Yeah, look at this game. And then by the time you get to the launch, I mean, look at Arc Age. I mean, a year ago, two years ago, there was way more excitement and hype for that game than there is now, and it's it's slowly coming out. And I think they just kind of burn out all their hype way too soon, and then you lose some of that momentum going into the launch of the game. That's just my opinion. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on it. I am kind of in the same boat as all of you. I kind of think it's a little early, but uh, if they like building hype. I mean, it's, it's a way to kind of build marketing now, but I am a fan of 40K. Hopefully they get it right, so we'll be watching that one. Um, all right, uh, next up this week, uh, Tryon announced it's uh, Rift's uh, second expansion. Uh, Troy's very happy about that. As yes, is, uh, very, very happy. Ob- obviously, as everybody, yeah. Um, so the next expansion for Tryon's Rift is called Nightmare Tide. And if you can't tell, you're going to go do a lot of water stuff. So A lot of water stuff. Luckily, though, it's not going to be like all forced underwater questing. They've, they've flat out said there's going to be zones you can go explore underwater, but like 10% of the new content is going to be underwater questing that you absolutely have to do. So if, you, if you're not a fan of underwater content, and I don't think many people are, um, you don't, you're not going to have to do a ton of that. But there's going to be some really interesting things to see and places to explore that they can do. With that Does that set. mean we're just going to get a lot of beach content then? Like everything's on the, on the beach, beach right along gonna, the water. <laughs> when you get to the rage, you're gonna be tanned and buff. You guys, who, who's who's still playing uh, actively Rift? I know. I still play off and on during events, but when this launches, I'll be back in wholeheartedly, 100% again. So. I think I'll be in with uh, maybe some Q and Burn to do some drifting for whatever mount's gonna be in these water rifts. <laughs> <laughs> Come in for some of that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. So you're taking, so we're here not a ton of water actually. So it's going to be the plane of water, realm of nightmares, dreams, madness. Presumably, I guess there's going to be water involved. Maybe not a ton, but I think that is the scary thing, is to take the route of giving the perception there's going to be a lot of underwater combat because MMO players don't generally like a lot of underwater combat. Um, 
Yeah, that, I, that, I mean, that, that there's an opportunity for to run people off because you just see that and you think, oh, God, it's all going to be underwater. But they, they've said that, you know, the water takes a lot of forms, you know, air and ice mm-hmm. and, and, you know, water, and there's zones around the water and things like that, too. So there's going to be lots of different stuff according to what they've told us so far. Of course, we haven't seen tons about it, but they've uh, nope. they've let little details slip out here and there. Yeah, I mean, well, what we know so far, we know it's the usual stuff. It's got um, it's gonna have five new levels. Uh, new zones, obviously, quests, dungeons, raids, all that good stuff. Um, a new rift type, which, what did you guys think of the new rift type? It almost, it almost sounds like it's going to be sort of an endless horde mode, doesn't it? Yeah, that, that's almost exactly what it sounds like. They, they, from what I heard Daglar say, there will be an end, but it'll seem pretty much endless. And I think that's going to appeal to certain players as long as the rewards and or XP are there. What do you guys think of the addition of minions? They're adding minions to the game. So they're going to be introduced. You can basically send them out. They can gather resources, money, items. Um, I guess there's, there, there's definitely some other games out that have done some things like this for Tor, something like that, you know. Yeah, it worked um, so well for Tor. That was, you know, something that they, <laughs> the players were just like, wow, I wish there was more of me not actually crafting in all time based. No, I, yeah. Well, WoW has their slaves coming in, right? <laughs> slaves. I don't know if you're calling them slaves, but yeah. <laughs> Work hands. I've been uh, yeah. I've been waiting for some clarification on on the minion thing too, because at one point after Storm Legion, when they started talking about you know going into the plane of water and stuff, they were talking about turning your pets into being like the pets that you have, like you're just little you know your little companion pets that just run around for no reason whatsoever, turning them into something that actually does something. But I haven't seen any clarification as to if that's what's going to be your minions or if there's going to be like a whole other set of minions or what. I'm, I'm curious to see if, if that is going to be like your, your current pets turn into your minions that can do things because at one point they said that they were going to look into doing something like that. New character progression called Mastery, which is going to actually be separate um, to their talent soul system, you know, the talent, or the, I should call it the talent system, it's the soul system. It wasn't Even, obvious. It wasn't already obviously all over the place. <laughs> you need more customization, more build customization. Yes. More points to spend, please. <laughs> is that? Like, I, I mean, R- that's where Rift really excels, right? Rift really excels it, in, in it. just the customization of like letting you try and do almost whatever you possibly can dream up. I I don't I I I would not want to be a part of their balance team. Really, I mean that the combat balance has got to be absolutely horrible to well, try to keep right? track of the whole time. You create but, so many possibilities that you don't have yeah. to not balancing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I and guess you got to balance I, I three different it. trees all together too. I mean, any combination of three on top of just balancing the one tree, could you imagine? Yeah, it's that's got to be that's got to be crazy. But I, do, I mean, I do like this uh, idea of uh, it's it's really this is this is kind of a, a good mix of uh, vertical and horizontal progression. Uh, when it comes to MMOs, I think that that's one of the things, like you said, this is one of the things that Rift has always done really, really well. And all right, give me some more. You know, I'm as long. And, and what uh, what I'm really interested to see, as far as this is concerned, uh, the new trees are concerned, is if this is going to be um, more uh, like non comparables, like ones that don't actually associate directly with the existing trees or if these are just completely new things and and in that case they can kind of balance on their own and you don't have to worry as much about uh, how they balance out with the the existing trees and so here's Here's my understanding of what that's going to be from the live stream that Daglar was on um, I think it was two weeks ago now each tree is going to have you know, the, the normal tree you're used to, then kind of part of that tree, but separate from those skills is going to be your masteries off to the side. And essentially when you fill out that tree the way you want it, you're going to unlock these, you have the ability to choose like one mastery will make you better at, you know, even better at this aspect of this tree or it, even better at some other aspect of the tree. Is, but what we're it, trying to do is not add more points into the soul tree, but still give you further customization and specialization within that tree. Is, is it now, is it something that is going to make you better at something else or is it you do this and you unlock this other, let's say, ability that is kind of independent of the the other tree? Yeah, or I is it... Think they, or is, or is it something you know, like, oh, okay, you do up, you go up to this, and you unlock this, and this will make this ability over here better. 
because if that's the case, then that is a that's that's power creep. I'm not I'm not a fan of power creep. Yeah, just I don't think they've given out like all the details. They haven't like shown us the mesh trees next to the right. trees or anything like that. But from what my understanding is, it's just spend up the skill tree, and then you'll have a choice of like. You know, you'll have, like, I don't know how many masteries. Let's just say four, and you'll choose one. And what that one will do isn't necessarily, I think he even flat out said, it's not necessarily tied to an ability. They didn't want it tied to it that way. Right. What they wanted is kind of overall, like, you're maybe something like you're better at dots or better at hots or, you know, mm. you know absorb more damage or something like that. I mean, I don't know. the I can't give good examples because I don't think they've even given examples. But from what I understand from what Daglar said, it's definitely not tied into... This mastery makes this specific ability more powerful. It, it's more of a this is your play style, so be better at the way you want to play it overall. It almost sounds like League. Of, it almost sounds like League of Legends mastery system. Like you, you get in there, you got all these points to spend. You can put them in offensive, defensive, or utility stuff, and they just increase stuff like increase extra damage or reduce cooldowns or, or add a little bit to crit here or. Um, do something faster, move faster, so just like little extra points to adjust your character differently. Uh, business model wise, like, you know, it's like pretty much what I think everybody expects. It's a free expansion, uh, but if you you can pay for the expansion, and you're gonna get to unlock new equipment slots that'll be account wide, um, probably some other cosmetic things. I don't know if that's all been laid out yet, but I'm sure there'll be some good stuff in there. Um, or you can unlock them per character in game. Uh, for free. That's kind of. Does that make that, that, I guess that works. You know, me, me and Justin were talking about that before the show. To to me, it's a little confusing. If you could unlock them through the course of just playing and leveling, then why would I pay for them? But like Justin said, you know, people just want stuff now, so just give it. Yeah, to I me, mean, so. you got to kind of commend yeah. the fact that like you have the option to do either or, so you can unlock them if you're just going to play the game. So. If you don't have the cash. And, and they haven't announced what type of gear or whatever is going to go in these slots, but they have said that these will be statted slots. So these will increase mm -hmm. your health, agility, dexterity, you know, whatever um, along the way. So these will be power increasing slots. To what extent, we don't know. They have Daglar's purposely not giving details on that right now. It's got to be, I mean, seriously, one of the best free to play MMOs on the market for sure. There's just I so much so. content yeah. here. If yeah. People haven't played it. Yeah. I don't know. Check it out. I mean, is this gonna, is this all gonna drag everybody back into, uh, into playing some, Rift? We'll it already it makes some. me want to. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to see the new rifts and stuff. That's my favorite uh, part of the game. Like, if I can just play the entire game just doing rifts, that's actually enjoyable. I mean, we got a chance a to go into the game. the planes, the elemental planes. I mean. All these worlds have been invading us, and now we're getting to invade those worlds. If they do this right, man, this is going to be awesome. Going into the plate of fire, the plate of water, you know, the night. I mean, that's what people plane. have been like speculating I mean, and waiting for awesome. forever, isn't it? Everybody's been waiting yeah. to go in. That's everyone has wanted, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, oh. that that's that's the logical next step for them, and it it sounds amazing, and I'm looking forward to it. And I'm hyped. Have they given? Detail. A little excited. Have they? Uh, have they given us any sort of like idea around a date? No, I haven't heard anything as far as a date. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think they said this year. I think that's the closest thing that I've heard that they're trying for this year. All right, well, we'll keep an eye on it. So uh, Rift, Nightmare, uh, Tide coming soon. All right, uh, I got some more to talk about, but first I want to tell you guys really quickly about an awesome deal we got going on with our friends over at Audible. If you guys haven't checked out Audible, it's audiobooks on your iPhone or Android or whatever kind of electronic device you have. And we want to hook you up with a free 30-day trial and a free audiobook. All you got to do is go to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Make sure you use that URL, sign up, make a new account, and you're going to get to pick one free book to download to your device and listen. We're going to talk about some wow. So the World of Warcraft books are great. The Christy Golden ones are great as well. So check it. This one is uh, War Crimes. Clocking in like 13 and a half hours. Let me play a little bit for you. It looks really too peaceful and beautiful to be the prison of someone so horrible. Lady Jaina Proudmore mused as she approached the Temple of the White Tiger. She, the Blue Dragon Calicos, Ranger General Verisa Windrunner, and King Varian Wren rode in a cart drawn by a steady-footed yak, whose fluffy fur indicated the beast had been freshly bathed. In acknowledgment of the honored status of the passengers, the cart had been upholstered with silk cushions in vibrant shades. 
though the travelers did bounce a bit when a wheel hit a rut. Check it out, check it Better out. Support Game Breaker by supporting our sponsor, Audible. Like I said, all you got to do, just go to audible.com slash gamebreaker. Make sure you use that URL. Sign up, make an account, choose a free book. You can choose World of Warcraft. There's a bunch of other World of Warcraft books on there as well. Um, or one of the many others, thousands and thousands that they have up there for free and try it out free for 30 days. That's audible.com slash gamebreaker. So speaking of the World of Warcraft, the Warlords of Drain of Alpha... Looking pretty good. Beta uh, invites starting to go out. Have you guys gotten in? Have you guys gotten in? Are you in? Yeah, I've been in for a few weeks now. Ooh. Anybody else? Am I the only one? <laughs> <laughs> My friend You're keeps trying it. to convince me to go in, but uh, I haven't yet. The, the, Troy, the, what do you th- The, the new male human models are tempting. Yes. <laughs> the, 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 the new models are kind of what made me interested in the first place, like seeing all those updated, because back when I quit WoW to go to Rift, I mean, that was part of, I mean, there were a lot of reasons I quit to move to Rift, but, the you know, the, the look of the game just was really looking dated even back then. So, you know, I moved on, but, you know, other than I spent the first couple of hours trying to remember how to play the game, um, because because the, the, you start out on a level ninety character, I think I have one level ninety, and it's been a year since I touched it. Troy, um, one, two, three, four, five, and then repeat. That's how you win. Yeah. That's how you play the game. That's, that's how, how you win. win. <laughs> that's yeah. your rotation. But yeah, I mean, other than that, the, the models look really good in the game. Um, the the questing is a little different. Um, I may not how just so? be that far into it. But some of the questing, there's not just like hubs pick up a dozen quests. Like there's actually, you know, more quests out in the world. And I'm sure this has probably been happening over time. I just haven't played the expansions very much. But I mean, it, it was, it felt. I mean, don't get me wrong. At the end of the day, when you're in, it's World of Warcraft. You're playing World of Warcraft. There's no mistaking that. But it is prettier, and the questing does, you know, go a lot smoother. It's a lot more progressive as you go out in the world. So, so far, um, I'm impressed, and I may actually pick up this expansion. I'm mm. Still deciding, but. I mean, it, I'm, it's it's very. What's the big draw so for you? Is it is it is it the change in how the quests are sort of delivered? Um, the the character models were the initial draw that made me interested to go in and play. But once I got in and the quests were so like you know yeah when 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 I got in and the quests weren't just go to one giant hub, go to one area, come back, turn those quests in. I was like, now wait a minute, I'm actually enjoying playing this game, when, when I realized I wasn't just looking at all the new character models, and I was just kind of getting lost playing the game, I was like, oh no, this could be very promising and very bad for my life, because <laughs> World of Warcraft can make portions of your life just disappear into oblivion. Well, the good I've thing is you, done get, that. you get a free level 90, Troy, so you, get, you can That's save true. some of your life. See, this yeah. is the perfect yeah. time. You're the perfect <laughs> candidate for Warlords with, with a 90. Oh, um man. Also, in other news, I mean, I'm sure everybody heard this, but uh, for those of you who don't know who he is, I'm Rob Pardo is one of the main, uh, one of the main, main, main dudes over at Blizzard. Um, after 17 years, he's leaving the team. He announced this week that he's leaving Blizzard. What do you guys think of this? I mean, you've got Ghostcrawler, who is their lead designer. Now you've got Pardo leaving, who's definitely a big, big uh, reason why we have the success of that game. Um, I don't know. What do you what do you what do you think? Uh, what do you think it says? I mean, uh, seventeen years is a long time at any company. Could just be time to move yeah. on and want to start something new. Yeah, yeah to me, like, it just comes to uh, they're probably ready to just move on and try something else. I mean, you lose that challenge after a while, and that's what drives most successful people is the challenge, and uh, that's probably what they're looking for at this point. Just want to, you know, seventeen years. Let's let's try something else. Start from scratch and see if we still got it. I mean, if you, if you look at the industry, if you work for Blizzard and you've worked for 17 years, you have a job life of five times the average person who works in the industry at that point. Like, usually they're switching after a couple of years to another game. Like, people who work for Blizzard, they just work a long time. It's an odd situation for that company. A lot more job security, it feels like, for them. I mean, he can pretty much do whatever the F he wants. The guy's got to be worth yeah. at least $100 million at this point. Hey, um, you, I'm coming to work on your game. Okay. You want to place bets now? I'll, I'll, I'll place my bet. I, I wouldn't doubt we've seen him at Riot. Riot. <laughs> Are they all oh, jumping man. ship to Riot? I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I, <clears throat> I wouldn't doubt it. I'll go with that. I'll go with he's going to Riot. Where are you going with? Are you going with a company? Or are you going with like startup? Or is he going to go make beer? I, I'm go. I, I'm go. Let's let, let let's go. I think he let's go indie. He's got You're money. Go indie. Yeah. Oh, so start he's his going, own he's studio go or just something. go with somebody. 
Uh, gosh. He'll go in with somebody. Well, I, I, he'll definitely go in with somebody. I'm just, I'm speculating, total speculation here, based off of absolutely nothing. Um, go in with somebody and kind of do something new. I think that that's the idea. Carmen San Diego, where's my guitar? <laughs> <laughs> He's that's what it is. <laughs> what do you think, Justin? Uh, I think if we see, if we actually see somebody else leave the industry in the next month or so. Then, then I think I can see possibly there being two people getting together to do something. Oh, you that. think a couple people so. maybe get together from the blizzard? Hmm, maybe, maybe. All right, Noob Fridge, what do you think? Uh, I think uh, if I had to guess, I wouldn't bet against you. I'd say he's probably going to riot. I'd say <laughs> somebody, somebody got in there, opened a little door, said, "Hey, here's some cool things we can do," and he's like, "Yep, I'm in." The, yeah. I mean, and, and and you know, he could leave within 90 days and and get some pay out of it, so it'll be good. Riot's coming go. down. Yeah. Is that the way Riot, Riot, Riot pays works? people to leave? That's it. That's Riot pays people to leave. Riot's just slowly <laughs> pulling over the Blizzard people to create that MMO. They're just going to gather them over the next year. And I can't believe that. Oh, I mean, if, I, I just, with that there's got to be. There, there, there has to be an MMO behind closed doors at Riot. Has to be. Oh, well, we've got that see, CCG. I don't see why Riot would want to make it. Complete. I'm sorry. I, I don't see why Riot would want to make an MMO. Why would Riot want to make an MMO? Why would anybody want to make an MMO? Why would well, anybody want to talk about not... MMOs? I have no idea of that. <laughs> I mean, it, they've been so successful not doing an MMO. Why would you want to jump into... I mean, because it's it's a huge, huge upfront cost. It, it always is, and I, I love every company that decides that this is the way we want to make money, but it is a huge upfront cost, and there is it's 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 generally speaking high risk. And why would you want to do that in this market? Why would you want to do that? Because well, World, World of Warcraft, Larry, we're going to make that again. Uh, because yeah, you, because wants it. because lightning strikes <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah, obviously, ten cents. Ten cents was like we need an MMO. We're funding it. So here you go. <laughs> if somebody's got the money to throw away on it, there you go. It's ten cent. Um, another thing unrelated to Warlords, but uh, or to the expansion, but um, so a player called Double Agent hit level ninety this week, or this is probably last week at this point. Um, as a neutral Pandaren on their starting island. Yep, and that's what happens when you go a year between expansions, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that is one dedicated player right there. You should put that um, on your resume, my friend. What, probably what, get what you far. What did he have to do? Didn't he have to craft or or something like mine nodes or something? I don't know. I didn't. What in the world could he possibly just because you, you start losing XP off of you start know, losing your mind is what you start, you start losing. losing well, say you that. start losing your penis at that point. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like you're you're saying put it on his resume. I mean, I, I feel like that's just going to a company and saying I will do the lowest scum of earth job for you and never. <laughs> <laughs> I will clean the toilets and act like they are nodes. Thank you. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy people just for the internet fame. <laughs> Picking flowers and mining. That's what it mining is. Mining and herbalism. There you go. Picking flowers and mining. There you go. All right. There you go. Larry Everett, follow him on Twitter at Shadow SHADDOE. Go over to hyperspacebeacon.com and, of course, uh, come over to uh, The Republic, which is our Star Wars The Republic show with this yep. Larry Everett as well. Uh, JKK, this is Justin Kennedy. Follow me at JKK Kennedy TV. It's JK Kennedy TV. Correct? Yes. Why well, are you going to be so called? Don't. Kennedy. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding, Kennedy. That Just kidding, Kennedy. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Troy, follow me on the Twitter at Noobfridge, N O B F R I D G E, Noobfridge. And of course, right here on Twemo. Which uh, we're getting back in the swing of things, so it looks like we're getting back on track. Might change some days around and stuff, but we've been a while, but we've got to get back on track with everything. So uh, follow us on uh, the Twitters at GameBreaker TV. Follow us on uh, Facebook at GameBreaker. And uh, make sure to go over to the deals page. Get some good deals on some games. Got a lot of good games coming up in October, man. Oof. October's going to be a sick month. Dragon Age, Battlefield. What else? There's like there's like a million. I'm gonna need a raise for October. I'm gonna have to seriously. <laughs> everything's coming out in October. It's gonna be ridiculous. I don't know. Check it out. We got a bunch of deals. We already got a bunch of pre-orders for games like Dragon Age. So go to GameBreaker.tv slash deals. Check it out. And uh, we'll see you next week for some more Twimo. Actually, we'll probably see you this week as well. Twice, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs>